invented a little place called Memphis. And yes, I mean, it's hard to be humble when you're from Memphis. But I'm going to try. But it does not help to face the fact that though y'all have so many good restaurants here, I mean, such a wide range, variety of cuisine here in Atlanta. I celebrate you. I give you praise. You are bad. But if you're talking about barbecue, <laughs> I just need to set the record straight real quick and mention that if you're going to get that, you need to go to Memphis. Yeah, you can. I mean, unless you want to have us over to the house and prove me wrong, uh, we would be happy to, you know, to test the theory. But I'll put it like this. We're going to try to at least be nice about it. And we're going to do this song. This is our barbecue song. It's a song called Do You Feel Me? It's co-written by Gary Gorn and the guy we call the soul man, the great David Porter, who wrote, something's wrong with my baby, something's wrong with me. He wrote, I'm a soul man. He wrote, you know he wrote the song, Hold On, I'm Coming, right? So we're going to dedicate this to my boy John the Butler, and it goes like this. Do you feel me? Somebody knows this song. Do you feel me? Do you feel me? I wonder. Do you feel me? I feel pretty good. Do you feel me? Back in the back, back there. Do you feel me? Oh yeah, I see. Do you feel me? Yeah, I wonder. Do you feel me? We do that.
It's a beautiful history, you know? It's got its ugly parts, right? Amen. But man, that don't make it any less beautiful, because look yeah. at us. Look at what it produced. Look at what it produced. And we're going to love each other, and we're not going to be afraid of the past. We're not going to be afraid of history. No, we're not. No, because that's how we know how to do right and wrong. That's how we know how to do better. Mm -hmm. If we close our eyes and shut off history, we don't have a chance. Amen. No, we got to do history. We got to do history. That's why I love the AU Center. They teach and folk history. Uh, I, my, my uncle was dean of music at a place called Morehouse. The Morehouse Glee Club. Yes, I was named after him. My name is Kirk Wendell Whaler. Yeah, Dr. Wendell P. Whaler. Yeah, Morehouse College. So I just got to tell you, man, I have a soft spot in my heart for this place. I want to do, I mentioned that the, the, the CD that we brought tonight is the one that, I was turning 60, 
I ain't, I ain't scared. <laughs> but at the time, it was a little unnerving because I woke up in the middle of the night one time, I was 59, and I went, wait a minute. I remember this feeling. It was about two weeks ago in my head. I was turning 40. I wish I had a witness. It felt like two weeks. I said, well, by that math, in two weeks from now, I'm going to be turning 80. So I got out of the bed, put my clothes on, went in there and got the computer and got all my credit cards and laid them out, and I started booking flights. My wife was scared to ask what I was buying. She's like, I think it finally hit him. But you know what? I did. I just went and started. I, I booked tickets. I went to eight countries. And I followed up on all these bad young artists I had heard in Nigeria and in France and Indonesia and Japan and, you know, uh, uh, South Africa and Kenya. And I just went, man, I went to all those places and I did all these collaborations. And I, that's why I look so young. <laughs> why I'm so humble. <laughs> but no, seriously, that, that CD is called Humanite. And uh, man, I'm just so grateful that I can say now that I am what we call Medicare age. Uh, all right. Oh, you don't hear me though. Yes, I do. Yeah, some of y'all say, oh, I don't want to get on. Okay, oh. you, you go ahead. Give me your Medicare. <laughs> I'll take yours, too. <laughs> now, I love me some Medicare. <laughs> what? Man, I love going to Walgreens. <laughs> and he say, that'll be $2. I say, yes. <laughs> you know, I, I'm self-employed musician, man. <laughs> I was spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Anyway, I'm sorry, I got distracted. So that's that's humanity. That's what that project, that's why we brought them, because we're about to come out with a new record, so these will be gone. So get, get yours and I'll have it sign it. Meanwhile, I want to ask a quick question. Does anybody know who released, and there's a little debate about this, but there's there's two answers to this question. I'm gonna give you the one I know. Who released the very first million selling jazz record. Yeah. Million selling jazz record. Al Jarreau, you say? Well, okay, I, I would, let me qualify it back to, that's a good guess, but you're wrong. I'm gonna qualify it. It was in 1963. <laughs> no, Donnie Hathaway was a kid in 63. Dave Brubeck, good guess. You're wrong, though. John Coltrane. John Coltrane. Excellent guest. All right. Wrong. That's wrong. <laughs> Miles Davis. Excellent guest. Wrong. <laughs> okay, you know what? I, let, let me just, I'll cut to the chase because, you know, I want to hear this other brother coming on later. But let me say this. The brother happens to be, not to say he was, he is, is. from Memphis, Tennessee. And he is 85 years old and still playing and looking fabulous. My wife told me that because there's a story that when he was touring in, in, in Europe, you know, he was he talking about, you know, 1964, the, the women rushed the stage. <laughs> When he played this song, the women rushed the stage. Now, I'm getting ready to play the song, so I'm just saying, y'all try to keep it, you know. <laughs> the women rushed the stage. And the reason, my wife explained it to me. I said, well, baby, yes, of course they did. He plays so good. She said, baby, it's not so much about that. Yes, he played good. She said, but the brother was fine. <laughs> she said, and... At 85, he's still fine. And his name, listen up, because he's still touring. He plays Atlanta. Don't miss him. And he be sharp like a bit. I mean, all this stuff here, I got it from him. His name is Charles Lloyd. Charles Lloyd. And I'm going to play the song, the first million-selling jazz song, and this is called 
forest flower.